it off. So when I started my first consulting job, I actually got a signing bonus. And when I got that signing bonus, I wanted to buy a Gucci bag. And a good friend of mine, Eve, told me, Zoe, if you buy that Gucci bag, you're straight up stupid. You can't have a Gucci bag and have debt. And what do I do with that 40 bucks cash? I put it towards my debt. So you are never too good to pick up odd jobs and do little things to earn you extra money, especially when you're on a debt repayment journey. Like I said, every single dollar counts. Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is something that I'm so excited but also nervous to be filming. I am going to be letting you guys in on how I paid off over $20,000 of debt in less than one year. So this video is gonna be super transparent, super honest, and right away I just wanna say, I do not live with my parents, I do not make thousands and thousands from YouTube, and I just think that I'm like a super relatable person. I feel like I'm a very normal person. I'm in a situation that a lot of people are in and I just really hope this video can give you guys some honest and relatable content for how you can actually apply the same strategies that I did to pay off a lot of debt in a little bit of time, a little bit of amount of time, whatever, okay? <laughs> so if you're new to my channel, a little bit of a background about me. I'm 24 years old. I live in Montreal in Canada. I work as a software consultant and then I also have YouTube as my side hustle. But as we'll talk about in the video, I don't make tons and tons of money from YouTube. So I think it's important to state that because I've watched a lot of videos of you know, YouTubers who are like, I paid off so much debt so quickly. And it's like, yeah, because you make 10 grand a month from YouTube. And that's not the case for me. Like I said, I also live by myself and I carry, you know, all of my expenses myself. So things like rent, groceries, hydro, all of that is all on me. And I've really found a lot of ways to kind of cut corners and save money while still living a nice lifestyle. So I really hope this video will be helpful for you guys. I want there to be a lot of takeaways that you can apply to your own life. And I really hope you enjoy it. Please, please, please let me know your thoughts down below. I really wanna know, you know, do you find these tips helpful? Do you want more? Please let me know. Also, I have to say, please give this video a thumbs up if you like it because it really supports my channel. It helps the algorithm and all of that. And if you're new, make sure that you're subscribed. I have lots of personal finance videos already up on my channel and more coming along the way. And I also do work vlogs about my life as a consultant. So check them out. Let me know if you like them. Subscribe if you like them. Let's get into this video. So I'm gonna break down the video as following. I'm gonna first describe my initial situation. So how much debt I had, where the debt came from and the actual amount Amounts. I'm gonna be giving you guys concrete amounts. Then I'm gonna talk about my work situation and where my income comes from and give you guys kind of a ballpark of how much money you know I have coming in every month so that you can gauge the amounts accordingly. Then I'm gonna go into my actual month by month repayment strategy to show you guys like how much I paid every single month to be able to reach such a high amount. And then I wanna talk about ways that you can increase your own income and ways that you can cut corners and save your own income to pay off debt faster. Now, there are different philosophies when it comes to debt. Some people believe that debt is okay and debt is good and you know you can carry it over many, many years depending on the interest rate and all of that. And there's other people who feel like debt is a burden that they no longer want to carry. I am of that category. I feel that my debt hangs over me. I feel like every... Thing I make and everything I buy isn't truly mine until I owe nobody anything. I don't want to owe nobody anything, okay? Um, so to me, that's my philosophy. Some people, you know, student loans um, are low interest rates, so you just carry them and who cares and you can invest your money and make more that way. But to me, that's just not important. And I think um, it's important to respect everybody's individual philosophies when it comes to debt and just know that there's no right or wrong way to do it. I used to really worry about what the right thing to do was, but it's really about what's the right thing to do for you. For me, the right thing to do was pay off all of my debt as soon as I can and really start my life, start investing and all of that in a way that feels good for me and like I don't have any clouds over my head. So that's kind of my philosophy and my approach to debt. So now let's talk about how much debt I have, where it came from and all of that. So all of my debt is actually student loan debt. So my tuition was about $8,000 a semester and then I had things like books, I had living expenses and all of that really racked up. I did work part-time all throughout university to try and keep my debt lower and that obviously helped a lot, but I did graduate with, <laughs> how much did I have? 
I graduated with $23,500 in debt, plus an additional $8,000 in line of credit debt. So what happened was I maxed out my Ontario government loan. I went on study abroad and I had to take a student line of government. <laughs> So what ended up happening was I maxed out my government student loan and I went on study abroad in Australia and I needed to take out more money to be able to pay for that. So I took out a student line of credit from the bank. Now, both of these loans were super low interest. My student line of credit was about 4% and my government loan was between 2.5 and 3.5%. Obviously, when it comes to paying off debt, you wanna pay off the highest interest first. So if you have credit card debt, you need to get that out of the way as soon as you can. Also, if you have credit card debt, you could consider switching around your debt and paying off your credit card with a line of credit that's at a lower interest rate and then only focusing on paying off that line of credit. But today's focus is really about student loan debt um, I'm really lucky that I was very vigilant and I never accumulated any credit card debt because that is the worst kind of debt to have. It's like 20% interest and we don't with that. So that being said, let's get into my current situation um, and like how much money I have just to kind of give you guys like a background of how I paid off my debt. I work as a software consultant and I don't actually feel comfortable disclosing my actual salary on YouTube, but if you're curious, you can look up on Glassdoor or other websites how much software consultants make and then you'll be able to get a ballpark of the amount of money that I make. I definitely make an above average salary for a new graduate. Um, I will say that. So I'm very fortunate that I make a good salary. I also work very hard, so it's not like I'm just raking in money. Um, I work very hard. Consulting is a higher paying profession. And yeah, so I make a good salary. Next is my side hustle. So until January of 2020, I made $0 from YouTube. Then I started raking up more money. I started making anywhere between 200 and $500 a month from YouTube. So I'm not making anything crazy. Um, I did start increasing my YouTube paychecks in about May of this year, of May of 2020. I started getting a few $800 paychecks, a few $1,000 paychecks, but it always varies and it's never consistent. I also started a consulting business of my own where I help people who are interested in getting into consulting or other career fields, basically spruce up their resume, help them with interview strategies and all of that. So I was bringing in income from that at about, um, let's say an extra couple hundred dollars a month. So I'm definitely fortunate with the amount of money that I bring in. I definitely work very hard. And part of why I work so hard is because of my debt. I wanna pay it off really quickly. That being said, I'm not by any means like a millionaire bringing in tons and tons of money. So in order to pay off my debt quickly, I also need to cut corners and save money wherever I can. So we'll talk more about that later, but just keeping that in mind that I do have a frugal mentality, um, especially when it comes to things like drinks, going out for dinner, um, shopping sometimes, like you won't find me buying designer items, you won't find me going out for expensive cocktails anymore. And a lot of that mentality change happened during uh, the COVID-19 lockdowns. You can watch um, some of my videos about that. I did have, I think I posted two videos where I really got super honest and vulnerable about how my mentality was changing regarding finance because I was so anxious all the time because I was spending way too much. So if that interests you, I'll have those videos linked down below. But now let's get into the month by month breakdown of how I paid off all of my debt. Okay, so I made a spreadsheet to track my student loans because I just think it's really important to track how much you're paying so that you can see your amount paid going up and your total balance owing going down. I think it's really important to visually see the work that you're putting in and I think that's awesome. Okay, so like I said, I had a line of credit and then I had a student loan. The line of credit was owing about $8,000 and for my birthday, my mom actually paid $4,000 of that off. So that was really, really nice. So I had $23,500 owing in government student loans and then in a remaining $4,000 um, on a line of credit. Now, the first thing that happened was the line of credit, I paid it off. So when I started my first consulting job, I actually got a signing bonus. And when I got that signing bonus, I wanted to buy a Gucci bag. And a good friend of mine, Eve, told me, Zoe, if you buy that Gucci bag, you're straight up stupid. You can't have a Gucci bag and have debt. And what she said just made so much sense. And I was like, you're absolutely right. So rather than buy a Gucci bag with my signing bonus, I paid off my line of credit. So that felt really good. I think I didn't pay it off completely from the signing bonus because the signing bonus was like $3,500. But in the months following, I was able to pay 
pay that off really quick. So we'll talk about bonus money and things like that later, but that was how I started my kind of debt repayment snowball was with that big lump sum amount right at the beginning. And this was in September of 2019. Now let's fast forward a little bit to November 15th, 2019, which is when I started paying off my actual student government loans. At this point, my loans had started to accumulate interest and my payments were starting to be owed because you have a bit of a grace period after you graduate and my grace period was up and it was time to start repaying my loans. So I set up a system where I said, I'm going to pay $500 a month back to my student loans. This amount was more than my required monthly payment. My required monthly payment was about $250. So it was pretty much double my required monthly payment. And for, as you guys can see on the spreadsheet for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months, I paid $500 a month to my student loan. So as you guys can see on the spreadsheet, what I did was I have a column with the date, I have a column with the amount paid and the balance owing on my student loan. On the other hand, I also added column, you can see column D where I added a balance paid amount. This was so that not only was I looking at my total amount you know, still owing, but I was able to look at how much I've actually contributed and feel good about that amount. So after three months of paying, I'd already paid off $1,500, which sounds really good rather than looking at, oh, I still owe 22,000. So you can see I'm hovering between the two columns here. And I think positive reinforcement is really important when you're paying off debt because it's easy to get discouraged and think, oh my God, I still owe so much. F this, I'm going to the bar, right? So keeping a positive outcome, oh my gosh, okay, I see, you know, this is how much, I've already paid, I think is really important. So I basically continued like that for seven months, paying $500 a month to my student loan when COVID-19 hit. So COVID was really my wake up call for my personal finances where, you know, there's nothing wrong with paying $500 a month. I think that's awesome. But I kind of reflected and I said, I wanna pay this off faster. Like if I'm paying $500 a month, if we do the math and let's do it right now because I forget what it was, but at $500 a month, and I was owing 23,000. So if we do the calculations, if I paid $500 a month out of my $23,500 owing, it would take me almost four years to pay off my debt. And I didn't want that. I didn't wanna be with debt for four years. I wanted to pay it off faster. So I did some reflections, and at this point, it also coincided with my YouTube growing a little bit more and going out and spending less money because of COVID, because we were in lockdown. So. I decided to increase my monthly payments to my loan. The other thing that happened was the Canadian government gave us an interest-free period basically for the whole summer because of COVID. So we were able to stop accumulating interest. So what I did was first in May, I paid $500. Then in June, I doubled that to $1,000. I set a goal for myself and I put this goal on my fridge. You guys will see in the cutaway, I literally wrote it on a cue card, put it on my fridge. I will pay $1,000 to my student loan in June, 2020. I think setting visual reminders is so important because it really holds us accountable and it keeps us motivated. And it's really fun when you see it written down somewhere to be able to say, wow, I actually did that. And I still keep this note on my fridge because because it lets me know that I am able to set goals and achieve them and it makes me feel really proud of myself. I know that's really cheesy. So in June, I started paying a thousand dollars. Then I, in June, I had a really good month with YouTube um, and I basically spent zero dollars because of COVID. So I contributed an extra $1,500 and that felt so good. So if you guys look in the balance column here, you can see my balance is really starting to go down. I went from 20,000 to 19 to $17,000 owing. And you can see in my balance paid, it's really starting to go up. So 3,500, 4,500, $6,000 paid off. You can imagine how good I was starting to feel seeing this high of a number in my balance paid and it hadn't even been a year. So these feelings are really good and I would look at this tracker, you know, maybe once a week to just remind myself and keep myself motivated. So I really recommend kind of copying this budget template and getting it going. So if we keep going after June, in July, I paid $1,000 and in August, I paid $1,000 as well. You can see on the side here that I added notes into the column. So I wrote that my goal was 1K and when I achieved my goal, I turned that cell green for positive reinforcement. I am literally a kid who needs stickers to congratulate myself, but hey, it worked. So now with my 
this positive momentum, I just wanted to keep on going. So in September, I paid $1,900 to my student loan. And on August 12th, sorry, the numbers are a bit weird here, but we'll talk about August 12th, why there is a $5,000 payment in a minute. But basically I'm trying to stay at a minimum payment now of $1,000. So here we are in, we're now in November. I haven't made my payment yet, but in October I paid $1,500 and you can see my total balance paid was at $16,800. So that plus my original line of credit repayment brings me to a total repayment of over $20,000 in literally a year. So at this point when I looked at my budget and I realized that I had paid over $20,000 total in student loans, I felt amazing. And I wanna pause here and let you guys know that you can absolutely do this. Like it is so possible. If I can turn my situation around from being like a shopaholic with terrible money habits to accomplishing this goal, you guys can do it too. So I just really want to put that out there that it feels so amazing to see how far you've come in such a short amount of time and it's never too late to start. Okay, so now let's get back to that $5,000 number because you guys are probably wondering where that came from. So that was actually a tax return that I got um, from filing my taxes and I got a fat tax return of $5,000. The reason it was so high was because in 2019, half of the year I was a student and then part of the year I was employed. So I was paying really high taxes while I was employed, but it wasn't like for the whole tax year where I was making no money as a student. So the government gave me back $5,000. Now, there are lots of situations where we get money back. It can be from taxes, it can be from a bonus, um, it can be lots of things like this. This is really where the big differences come into play because you can either buy a Gucci bag because a lot of the time this bonus money feels like free money. It's like, oh sweet, the government gave me five grand, let me go buy a Gucci bag or you can take this money that is essentially free money and put it into yourself. So rather than buy something expensive with my signing bonus, rather than buy something expensive with my tax return, I put it towards my debt. I put all of that money towards my debt. So that is why there is that $5,407 on here because literally the entire check from the government, I went whoop, right onto my student loan and that felt so, so, so amazing, you guys. For any of you guys who are Canadians and who are finance geeks, you may be like, Zoe, you could have put that towards your RSP. Yes, I considered it, but the amount that I would have gotten back from my RSP next year just weighed less to me than the feeling of paying off my debt quicker. So I did consider that, but I chose to just put it towards my debt, so. There you go. So let's talk about bonus money. Bonus money can come from anywhere and I am a firm believer in whatever free money you get invested in yourself. So that can be anything. Let's say you water your neighbor's plants and they give you 20 bucks. Now you can very easily spend that 20 bucks and that's the kind of thing I used to do too. Or you can be like, hey, that's 20 bucks. I'm going to put on my credit card bill or put towards my student debt. And when you start doing that, when you start taking these little bits of bonus money that you get and putting it towards your debt, my God, you guys, it adds up. So if we look back at my spreadsheet, you'll see, you know, I could be kind of OCD and stick to the thousand dollar number, but in September I had some bonus money. I had a bit of money left over and I was like, you know what? Rather than just let this sit in an account, I'm gonna put it towards my debt. So anytime I get extra money, and this extra money can be from a YouTube sponsorship, that extra money can be from YouTube AdSense money, that extra money can be from literally anything that applies to you. If your grandma gives you money, if your mom gives you money, if like I said, you walk your neighbor's dog and they give you money, anything like that, take these bonus monies, these things that were not accounted for in your budget and put them towards your debt. It will add up so quickly. Now on that subject, I really believe in having a side hustle and you don't need to be a youtuber to have a side hustle you can do so many different things <laughs> if i wasn't on youtube what i would do is teach kids teach and if i wasn't on youtube what i would do is teach english to kids in china there are so many websites that facilitate that and you can make a lot of money doing that so if you're interested in a side hustle i really recommend that you look up different side hustles that you can do to earn you some extra money and it's really awesome another thing that i do this is so random but there's a lady who lives in my neighborhood who works for a tech company and they run studies where you basically like talk into the phone because they're doing like voice recognition system i might get my identity frauded but i also get like 
40 bucks cash. And what do I do with that 40 bucks cash? I put it towards my debt. So you are never too good to pick up odd jobs and do little things to earn you extra money, especially when you're on a debt repayment journey. Like I said, every single dollar counts. Now on that note of every dollar counts, that also means that every dollar counts whenever you can save money. So I have just become very cheap and at this point my friends kind of know that about me. I don't like to eat out unless it's a special occasion. If we're hanging out with friends and you know there's like a purpose to ordering takeout, I will do it and if I'm gonna enjoy it. But if I can easily cook at home and join my friends after or you know, if there's no purpose to spending the money, if it's not gonna make you feel good, I just don't do it anymore. If I know I'm gonna feel guilty after going out for coffee, I don't do it. I bring my own coffee mug and my friends kind of know this about me by now. So I just think it's really something that everybody can get in the habit of is cutting back on your expenses. So it really comes down to two things. You can lower your expenses and you can make more money. A lot of people see this as an and or thing and they're like, well, I'm going to lower my expenses, but then I don't need to make more money. But it's like, why not do both? You know, and if you do both, all of that extra money can literally go towards your debt and then you can be in a phenomenal situation where you're paying things off so, so quickly, you are rolling in that momentum and you're paying your debt off really, really quick. Other ways of making bonus money just quickly on the side is you can sell stuff. Anytime I sell my clothing, anytime I sell an old furniture, I take that money and I put it towards my debt. So these are just examples that you can do to pay off your debt more quickly and really rake in and take advantage of that bonus money. Okay, you guys, so there you have it. That is how I paid off $20,000 of debt in one year. Definitely wasn't easy, but it was a lot of fun and it's gonna keep being fun when I finally pay all of it off and you guys will be the first to know when I accomplish that goal. But the takeaway that I want you guys to have from this is that if I can do it, you can absolutely do it. You can turn whatever financial situation you are in around positive attitude, make it fun, and you can absolutely do it. So I really hope this video was helpful. I hope you got some good takeaways from it. Please let me know how I did because this is my first time filming something a bit more concrete when it comes to finance. And I tend to be a very like casual and informal person. So I hope I did a good job. Please let me know your thoughts and let me know which tips you guys are gonna implement. I wish you all the very best of luck on your debt repayment journey. You can absolutely do it. Like I just wanna like squeeze you through the camera and let you know that you can do it and that's about it so I hope you like this video thank you for watching and I'll talk to you on my next one bye